Welcome to my YouTube page. Don't forget to subscribe, click on the bell to receive notifications. And into the soul, and we is clear to them the narrative. So Allah takes it upon himself, and into the soul, and we is clear to them the narrative. So Allah takes it upon himself. Many of the translations, especially the Urdu translations, have translated the word Hur as beautiful maiden. If the word Hur means a beautiful maiden, it means a beautiful maiden, then what will the woman get in paradise? Actually, the word Hur is a plural for Ahwar, which is applicable to the man, and Hawar, which is applicable to the woman. And it signifies the characteristic of Hawar, which means big, white, beautiful eye, and describes especially the whiteness of the eye. The similar thing is mentioned as Azwaj al Mutaharin. Many places in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 25, and Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 57, it says Azwaj al Mutaharatun, which means companions, pairs. So the word Hur is rightly translated by Muhammad Asad as spouse and also by Abdullah Yusuf Ali. Abdullah Yusuf Ali as companions. So Hur actually means a companion or a spouse. It has no gender. For the man, he will get a good lady with big beautiful eyes. And for a woman, she will get a good man with big beautiful eyes. I hope that answers the question. Zach and Ike, what did you say? So Hur actually means a companion or a spouse. It has no gender. I didn't hear you. So Hur actually means a companion or a spouse. It has no gender. Please, one more time. So Hur actually means a companion or a spouse. It has no gender. For the man, he will get a good lady with big beautiful eyes. And for a woman, she will get a good man with big beautiful eyes. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> <laughs> Is that so? Men are Hur al Ain as well, Mr. Zakir Naik? Really? Hmm. Let us see if that's true. Let us see if Hur al Ain can be men too, according to Zakir Naik. Or did he just lie to his audience who do not know Arabic, who do not know about real Islam? What does Quran, what does Islam truly says about Hur al Ain? Can they be men too, like Zakir Naik just said? Or did he lie? Hmm, let us see. Now, is Zakir Naik correct about this? What does the Quran actually truly say about the Hur al Ain? If we go to Surah Ar Rahman, chapter 55, ayah 56, we can read Lam yatmithhunna insun qablahum wa la jan. Meaning, they are untouched, those maidens are untouched before them by any man or jinn. Now the word yatmithunna in the Arabic means, actually it's describing what is inside the female private part. And it's the hymen, which is untouched. Yes, you heard it correctly. The hymen is untouched, but they have to be uh, you know uh, sugarcoating the ayah here so it's actually describing what is inside uh, the female private part and that part the hymen is untouched by no man or any jinn did you catch it and if we go to chapter 78 surah an naba ayah 33 chapter 78 surah an naba ayah 33 we can read wa kawaiba atraba and the maidens with swelling breasts, like of age, swelling breasts. Last time I checked, men do not have swelling breasts, Mr. Zekker Nike. So why are you lying to your audience who do not know Arabic, 
or let alone have no idea what actually Hur al Ain are, according to the Quran and Islam. <laughs> <laughs> so let us listen to an actual scholar, Yasser Qadi. Let us see if he's going to agree with Zakir Naik, who does not know Arabic. So let us see if Yasser Qadi is going to refute Zakir Naik and if he's going to spank him like I just did. Let us listen to Yasser Qadi. States, as you know that some of the people are saying that the word Hur does not refer to a female companion in Jannah. And this is the belief of some of the, what we call the modernists or progressives. Some of the people who are, to be honest, so embarrassed by their religion that they want to change it and they want to make it in a way that they think it will be acceptable uh, in the West or in other places. This is a modern phenomenon. I do not know of any classical scholar, of any of the groups of Islam, Sunni, Shia, Mu'tazila, Khadiji, none of the classical scholars of Islam held this uh, position or opinion. This is a completely new opinion. And it is being propagated by certain sectors uh, in the Western world in particular. And they say, al hur al ain refers to a white, luscious grape. It is a fruit. This is what they say, al hur al ain is a grape. It is not uh, a female companion. And really, it is so easy to refute this concept simply by reading the descriptions of the Hur Ain in Jannah. And I want you to read these descriptions, how Allah Azza wa Jal describes the Hur Ain. Grapes are not described the way Hur Ain are described. And I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. Wakawa'iba atrab and other things. No grape can be described the way that Hur Ain. Uh, if it was a, you know, a, 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 another point being, Allah Azza wa Jal clearly says in the Quran about the Hurun Ain, "Lam yatmithunna insun qablahum wala jan." No human being or jinn has polluted them, meaning they are virgins. This is clear in the Quran. There's no such thing as a virgin grape or a widowed grape. Okay, so when you read the descriptions of the Hur in the Quran and especially in the Sunnah, there is no question whatsoever that it is referring to a female companion. Where they get this from? They get it from the fact that there is a word in another language called Syriac, where Hur, if you mispronounce it and you add another mark to it, it becomes something like a grape in that language. And they say this is something from Syriac language. But if I speak to you in Urdu and you try to understand in English, that's a problem. The Quran is in Arabic and for them to assume it is in the Syriac language, it's a problem. So the reality is this position has no scholarly or academic merit to it whatsoever. What the hell is this? A'udhu Billah. We have seen the evidence. You cannot escape anymore. You're finished. A'udhu Billah. Everyone will unfollow you now. You are a crook. And you are a fraudster. And we will call every, each and every single one of you out. Wallahi, we will call you out and we will catch you. Because part of our da'wah is not just to find the disbelievers. The disbelievers who are a'da. The enemy is disbelievers. But also to find the munafiqun of the ummah. That they're creeping around, pretending to be Muslims. You're finished. You're finished. You're finished. You're finished. Wallahi, you're finished. Wallahi, you're finished. Don't ever come out. Any, any retraction you do now... Switch off your social media. I don't want to see your face. I don't want to hear your voice. Wallahi, wallahi, you're a crook and a fraudster. I parked the tractor right here. Now it's gone. Is that your goat? Yeah, that's Nelly. She's in heat, huh? Yeah. That's why I got her separated from the other animals. They can't resist her. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. <laughs>